so let's just crack on with this. This is episode six of uh, Shark Attack Case Files, and uh, today we're we're heading back to uh, Australia, which is the, the shark attack capital of the world, as we all know. And we're heading to South Australia, so I think this is called the Air Peninsula. So if we scroll in, it's this area here called uh, Smoky Bay. So the attack uh, took place in this bay. The, the exact location is not quite known, but I'll explain that in a minute. So I mean, I mean, there's fuck all around here. It's just like it's like nothing here. It's like some towns. It's these are little fishing villages. No idea. Never been there. Anyway, the attack took place in here, Smoky Bay. Uh, as I mentioned, I think in the first video, the the, the global statistics uh, of the of the the, the 1416 verified great white shark uh, attacks globally, a, a third of them have taken place in Australia, 454. So in South Australia, there's been 20 26 great white shark fatalities. So these yes, these are fatalities. So the third of the fatalities. Are in Australia, great white sharks, and yes, South Australia, 26 great white shark fatalities. Um, and then just as another statistic, uh, in uh, Australia, there's actually been 1297 shark attacks, all species so tiger sharks, bull sharks, great white sharks, bronze whaler sharks, whatever. That's how many attacks there's been, and then there's been uh, of, of those 1297, uh, 294 have been fatal. So it's an interesting statistic that it's sort of a 23% chance that if you get attacked, <clears throat> you're you're, you're going to get you're going to die. Your shark's going to kill you, basically. So your decisions. Yeah. So location, uh, Smoky Bay. Yeah, west coast of the Air Peninsula, South Australia. This attack took place back in 2002 on a Tuesday, the 30th. So. These guys obviously didn't have jobs. They just probably, uh, maybe they were on vacation or whatever. I don't know what they were doing, but they were basically fishing for scallops. So um, um, there must be good money in this. So these guys are out collecting scallops, diving. Species involved was a great white shark, uh, six to seven meters long. So absolutely enormous shark. So 20 footer. Time of the attack took place uh, just, just past midday. So 1240 hours. Um, Water depth was 10 meters, which is 30 foot, and the moon moon phase was a full moon, so it's a sandy bottom, good visibility, and the injury was a fatal injury. Yeah, so this, and obviously I don't, I don't know if I mentioned that the yeah the victim was a young young male, 23, Paul Buckland. So yeah, the, the, the Paul Paul and his friend Shannon. Uh, Jensen were, were diving for scallops and they, they had a, uh, a six and a half meter mono holder aluminium boat and uh, one of the interesting things is they, they were both wearing or they took it in turns to wear a, uh, a shark protective oceanic device or the shark pod as they're known which emits a uh, electrical signal which is creates a, like a bubble round around the person swimming which is uh, meant to deter sharks because the sharks can obviously pick up um, electrical uh, signals with the 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 apertures on their face the apertures of lorenzini on their face which is the pits that you see on the shark's face the small dots <clears throat> so they can detect detect electrical signals so this, this these devices that's how they work and they're meant to, meant to deter sharks so the way this played out is these guys le left the quayside uh, in smoky bay uh, in the morning sort of half seven in the morning <clears throat> and they went to five different locations and they're on their fifth location so what they done is they took it in turns to dive so sort of an hour on hour off so one guy would would, would dive for an hour they change over then the other guy would would dive for an hour and then the guy up in the boat would I don't know, sort sort the, sort the scallops out or wherever he was doing the equipment and then the other guy would be diving collecting uh collecting scallops so you had you had a support guy in the boat in this this six and a half meter aluminium boat so but a roughly uh, half so i think at half 11 they reached the fifth fifth location and they're in about 30 32 feet of water which is yeah it's about just over 10 meters of water <clears throat> and they they switched over and uh yeah so i think uh, shannon had given uh, paul the, the this this the shark pod he he was wearing so they changed that over uh and he said uh shannon said that he didn't see paul turn the turn the device on 
so he'd obviously turned it on maybe when he when he got to the water but what what normally happens is they they turn the device on and when they get to the bottom the, these guys just turn it off for whatever reason <clears throat> so yeah he he uh he they switched over he'd been in the water about five minutes uh and, and shannon was in the support boat he was sorting out the catch uh doing, doing various tasks uh and then all of a sudden he he he, he heard uh he heard paul yell yell his name and he didn't he didn't see him come up but he he, he knew he knew something was wrong and he heard, he heard Paul saying, Shannon, come quick. Uh, so he kicked, kicked the motors into gear and started the motors to, uh, over to where his friend was. So he'd come to the surface. Uh, and then as, as he's making his way over, the shark attacked him. Uh, and he, he, he you know, the, 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 Shannon saw, saw, saw this attack happen right in front of him as he was like making his way over to where, where uh, Paul had surfaced. And he could see it was a great white shark, and it, and at this point, the shark had uh, had his friends in his jaws. It sort of lunged out of the water, uh, shaking his head, thrashing around in the water. But it didn't take him under; it was just thrashing him on the surface. And it is, and they reckon he reckoned the girth of the shark was just absolutely ginormous, and it was it was way well, he said it was it's bigger than the, the aluminium boat. And if you remember, the boat was sort of like yeah, six and a half meter, so this shark was absolutely ginormous. And he said. He said his friend wasn't even screaming, uh, but it, it, it was just like completely, a completely violent attack. And by the time it, he he reached him, he actually hit hit the shark with the side of the boat, and then he went round to the steps, um, and he managed to pull his friend on board. Uh, and it's at that point the shark uh, let go, uh, and he was able to pull him in. But and he, and he actually felt the zap of the of the shark pod, so he knew at that point it, it had been engaged. So the shark pod was on because it actually had given him a small electric shock as he pulled his friend on board. And then I think when he pulled his friend on board, so when uh when Buckland was pulled on board, he he was he was just still alive, and he his, his last words were yeah get, get me in the boat. And then he he yeah literally died in his friend's arms. Yeah, absolutely horrendous, like like war hero stuff. <clears throat> and he yeah so he he just bled out uh, uh and uh, and yeah unfortunately uh the radio on the boat was also defective so they couldn't actually phone for any help or anything so we had to, uh, he, uh shannon had to make his way in uh, with his with his you know with his dead friend on board they managed to alert some fishermen they saw on the way and they they, they called an ambulance um so when they arrived at the boat ramp there was an ambulance waiting but it was clearly yeah too late to save uh mr buckland uh had, had unfortunately passed away yeah and i mean his injury the post-mortem examination of his injury that his uh his right leg had been completely amputated through the hip uh and there was yeah multiple uh irregular incision bite marks uh, you know all along his buttocks upper upper left leg it, it, the guy was actually covered in in bite marks from when the shark had initially attacked him at the surface uh and shook him uh and uh he 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 bled out so he probably although he was still alive when he got on board the boat from the time that the initial attack took place when the boat got to him and then, and then his friend shannon hit the shark with the boat and at the time he pulled him on board it's probably a couple of minutes so in that time he, he he basically bled to death yeah absolutely horrendous and they, they were unable to further ascertain the size of the shark from the bite marks because they were just too too irregular. The wounds, it was just completely covered in incisions. He'd been basically ripped to pieces. <clears throat> yeah, absolutely, absolutely diabolical stuff is. And uh, the, yeah, the shark pod, there was also a little bit of a, uh, an investigation or, or there was some, some concerns over that the divers had not used the shark pods correctly because it, it, it was... Um, the manufacturers recommend that there's that the, the, the two electrodes are only a meter or a meter and a half apart, which creates the perfect bubble around the diver to, to allow for this this um, this this signal uh, this this electrical signal to um, basically create a safe bubble, which 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 is meant to deter the shark. So, but very very hard to to work out whether 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 they were using it correctly or not uh yeah and then it's also the, another thing that makes this attack interesting is that <clears throat> it's just that how, how how this guy reacted so how uh paul buckland reacted once he once he saw the saw the shark so it's basically surmised that what what happened here is that 
that, that this shark was probably stalking these guys for, for quite some time. This is believed to have been what happened. This so the shark was 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 stalking them, and then when Shannon left the water, uh, it was only a five minutes before um, Paul hit the surface when the shark actually he actually saw the shark for the first time. So it was probably the commotion of those two changing over that actually uh, t t took took the shark's fancy and pulled the shark into the area. <clears throat> and then once uh, Paul had, had switched over, he'd gone down. Uh, and it's believed uh, that at this point, they, 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 they were turning it off, turning the shark pod off. So he's obviously at, uh, underneath, um, along along the seabed, looking for scallops. And then it's probably at this point that he saw the shark and then engaged the uh, shark pod. But what 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 he done wrong here? Well, obviously, you know, in this situation, you're not going to be thinking uh, too lucidly because obviously you've just seen a fucking massive shark. But what he perhaps should have done was was made his way along the bottom to below the boat and then come up ne next to the boat. But what he what he done was obviously saw the shark, panicked, uh, hit the surface as quickly as he could, shouted to his friend, <clears throat> but then by the time the sharks just absolutely love attacking stuff on the surface and 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 probably what happened here the shark just thought right right he's at the surface let's go check him out so the shark went over and i it, it's postulated that the shark didn't didn't actually want to eat him he, he just wanted to check him out because what happened is the shark was just had it in his had it had him in his mouth and this is where all these irregular bite marks come from so it wasn't actually trying to bite him in half or anything but what happened is is when when Shannon came up alongside with the boat and he hit the shark with the boat quite hard, they think at that point is the shark uh, felt threatened and then it bit down, it bit down and just absolutely just, yeah, bit his leg off basically uh, right through the hip. Uh, and that's actually what killed him. So then by the time he pulled him on board, that, that is just su such a severe injury that that's, that's really what finished him off. So, yeah, <clears throat> and that is really the difference between a, an uh, unprovoked attack and a and a provoked attack. So initially, this was a was a an unprovoked attack because he he was just minding his own business, and the shark attacked him. So he, the shark wasn't provoked to attack him. But then, when he was hit, when the shark was hit with a boat, it was then provoked. So then the shark reacted, and then it was sort of a provoked attack. So this is the one of the rare instances where you you, you have both. You have a, a an unprovoked and a provoked attack all in one attack, which un, unfortunately uh, cost this guy his life. So yeah, but I mean, it's, isn't it? And again, it just goes to show that the, on the surface, the, this shark pod did nothing, and once the shark. <clears throat> wanted to attack him it just attacked him so you know it, it's still up in the air whether these uh this shark deterrent uh, works or not but anyway yeah interesting interesting story and attack there so i'll leave you with that one schlaters <clears throat>